Hey guys, how's it going? It's Michaela, and although I've been posting videos, um, travel related videos on YouTube recently, I've actually been home most of the time since mid March now, um, self isolating and just going through my old video footage and putting out content, but mostly staying home. And this weekend, instead of going out and doing Hanami, I'm sitting in front of my big window and I'm enjoying the sunlight, enjoying the green in front of our balcony, but staying indoors and being low-key. When I think about what I've been through in Japan, now I've been here 15 years and uh, I was here in the 2008 economic crisis uh, when the yen got super expensive and all I had was Canadian money that was practically worthless. I've been here through the nuclear meltdown, the big earthquakes, the Kumamoto earthquake, and through all of these trials and tough times, like, I've persisted, we've persisted, and um, we're gonna get through this too. But I think if this is your first crisis that you're spending overseas, it might be a little bit intimidating and even a little bit scary. And if you're here, I think at this point you're in it. You're in it for the long haul. You're in it for better or for worse, and you don't know how things are gonna turn out, but you're in it. The first thing I wanna say is uh, you absolutely are not alone, and we are all in this, and we're gonna get through this. Like everything else that has happened in the past, 10, 15 years in my life, I can tell you I have overcome them and Japan has overcome them and we've come out stronger than ever before and this time is no different. We are going to be okay, we just need to be careful and we need to take care of ourselves and do the best that we can every day. So at the moment Japan is not on lockdown but I do foresee it potentially happening in the future. Um, just because people have a false sense of security at the moment, I think because there is no transparency in what is actually going on around us. And as soon as we start getting an idea of how big the problem is in Japan, I think people are going to start taking it a little more seriously. I know that in Tokyo, um, people have already started panic buying foods and that's kind of sparking concern for a lot of people. But um, in other prefectures across Japan, I haven't really seen that much of it yet. And I think that now is a good time to prepare yourself. Um, you don't have to panic, but maybe prepare yourself. I think it's important to prepare for the possibility that we will be in this for a while and that things are gonna get better, but not before they get worse. So on that note, while we still have our freedom, there is a little bit of information I wanna put out there that you can do to maybe prepare yourself and maybe ease your own mind and be sure that when things do get a little bit more difficult, you will be okay. When I started seeing videos online of people panic buying foods in Tokyo, I started to get a little bit anxious and I started to think maybe I need to go out and buy as much as I can as well. But the first thing that I did, the first thing that I did this time was go and rearrange my kitchen and take stock of everything that I have. On this side, I have the desserts, like canned tomatoes, the coconut milk, and then I've got my curries. So I love curry and I collect different types of curry paste and spices. I do have instant noodles but um, I like the Korean cold noodles. They're really nice and it's easy to stack vegetables on top and make it healthy. There's some instant miso soup. Over here I've got some seasonings. This is Mexican tomato salad, uh, avocado salad, got some rice flour for gluten-free bread, organic edamame spaghetti, regular spaghetti, for me since this is quite easy to buy and stock up on and it doesn't go bad very easily. And I surprisingly, because I am a food hoarder, I have a lot of food and that helped ease my mind because once you know what you have, you know what you're missing. Once you know what you need, you can make informed decisions about what you need to get rather than thinking that you need a lot of something or too much of anything else. I don't expect you to stock up to my level, but looking at all the things that I have in my pantry, I'm able to tell you the things that I use the most and the things that I definitely think you should have. I'm gonna make a list and put it in the video description so you can check it and you can bring it with you if you're shopping, um, just for those of you who have not been through this before or people who are not used to cooking at home or stocking up their apartment. Um, maybe this list will be helpful for you the next time that you're out grocery shopping. Now the number one thing that I would recommend that you stock up on is curry. And there are so many different types of curry in Japanese supermarkets. You're bound to find the curry aisle where there's rows and rows of different brands of curry, different flavors, different origins. There's Indian curry, there's Thai curry, there's Japanese curry. Um, there are so many different options. Now, if you've never made Japanese curry before, it's insanely easy. And once you know how to make it, pretty much every single box on that shelf will be accessible to you. So let's go through it really quick. Saute the onions, then add your meat. Add potatoes and carrots 
and anything else you want. I added mushrooms. Saute and add 3 cups of water and let boil for 10 to 15 minutes. Then take out your box curry and break into cubes, turn off the heat, add the cubes and stir. You can add more vegetables here if you want. Simmer over low heat to thicken and prepare your side dishes. Add some cheeky cheese on top and serve. Now the best part about making a big pot of curry is not only that it's extremely cost effective, but a big pot will last you at least a few days. And in Japanese, they often say that curry tastes better the next day. And if you've made a pot of curry and you're tired of eating it the way that you normally eat it, you can make curry udon, you can make yaki curry. It's extremely customizable, so you can add meat if you want. You could not have meat if you want. If you want to make it completely vegan, I recommend buying curry powder instead of the curry boxes instead. Um, but you can make it pretty much the same way. I would just add the curry powder before you add the water. And if you're buying, if you're using the blocks, I would throw them in after you add the water. Eating healthy is very important when you are self-isolating. I can't stress this enough. Um, if you are socially isolated, you're not going outside, you're not getting fresh air, you're not getting sun, and you're not eating healthy, this is a recipe for depression. And in order for you to get through this and to get through this with a strong immune system, you do need to be eating as well as you can. So yes, please consider buying boxes of curry. And then carrots, potatoes, and onions. These are the basics that you need. And not only that, but like once you have carrots, potatoes, onions, you can use them in other things too. Extremely versatile vegetables, extremely versatile uh, dish. Hello. Another great thing about Japanese curry is that it's usually easy to find in Asian supermarkets across the world. Lots of import shops seem to stock it. So I have heard that in North America, Asian grocery stores and Asian supermarkets are often spared from panic buying because people think that it's not safe to shop there. You're in luck. Um, if they have curry, buy a box, try it at home, and let me know how it goes. Another thing you'll notice in my little recipe segment is that I used instant miso soup. I recommend stocking up on a few of these as well. You can usually find them in your local Japanese grocery store. Uh, all you have to do is add water and different freeze-dried blocks have different vegetable combinations so you can buy a few different ones and figure out which one is your favorite. In a pinch, white rice, miso soup, and a side. So grilled fish or some sautéed vegetables or some meats. Um, that's all you need for a simple Japanese-style teishoku meal. It's a very low-effort, low-commitment way to balance out a meal, so pick up a couple of these if you see them in your supermarket. They're really useful. Now, most Japanese grocery stores will also have cook -do. Um These cook -do boxes will have uh, sauces and flavors and seasonings for very typical, staple Japanese and Chinese um, foods, and they're really easy, really, really easy to make. Usually they only require uh, one or two ingredients. Um, some of them you might already have, some can be really easily purchased at the supermarket while you're shopping, and these are great ways to make a killer side dish for a meal without spending too much time, but also while using fresh ingredients so it's not all preservatives and yucky stuff. Canned diced tomatoes. Now these could be any brand, not particularly, doesn't have to be the brand that I'm holding right now. I always pick up diced tomatoes when I'm out shopping um, because they are so versatile. They're so good to have in your pantry for when you have no idea what to make. Soups, stews, curry, pasta, yes. Saute some onions, some bacon, some eggplant, throw in your diced tomatoes, season with oregano, salt, and pepper, throw it on some pasta, you've got a pasta sauce. It's, it's so easy to work with diced tomatoes. You don't need to buy a lot of them, you don't need to buy like all of them, but maybe pick up uh, a can or two the next time you're shopping if you see them because they are very, very useful to have. Okay, spices. Um, spices are really, really helpful because they help elevate even the most basic meals. If you don't have a lot of spices, olive oil, salt, and pepper are really good with fresh vegetables, but um, if you are looking to jazz up the same old, same old, instead of buying all those spices individually, what you can do is buy Italian seasoning, buy tandoori chicken spice seasoning. If you can find um, different seasonings for different purposes, you can collect those and use them on your vegetables, you can use them on your mashed potatoes, you can use them on your meats, of course, um, and you can use them to elevate meals that would rather otherwise taste bland. 
All right, um, I forgot to mention this in the video, but this is super important. Invest in a good yakiniku sauce. Having one of these when you're at home um, helps add flavor to a simple meat and vegetable dish. I like to take leftover vegetables and fry them on the frying pan until they kind of get charred and then throw them over rice and put the yakiniku sauce on top to make a yakiniku rice bowl. It's a great way to get your vegetables and it tastes really good. I also recommend getting ponzu and this is a yuzu pon so it's made with uh, yuzu citrus instead of regular lemon but a ponzu is usually a citrus soy sauce blended sauce that's very fragrant and very tangy and I like to use this one on steamed vegetables and also in sautés when I sauté greens like bok choy or shingiku um, any sort of Asian greens taste really good with ponzu. Breads, pasta, and rice are really important to have. Make sure that you have them. Bread can always be frozen, so buy a loaf of bread. You don't need to buy tons of bread and tons of rice and tons of pasta, but having a good variety means that you can have flexibility when you're cooking at home and you won't get bored. Okay, so next I want to talk a little bit about Japanese supermarkets. Um, for those of you who have not lived here very long, you might not know, but Japanese supermarkets will always discount their uh, deli products and their bentos about an hour before closing so in a pinch if you are running low on cash and you need a good meal you can usually drop by your local supermarket um, near closing time after the dinner time rush so usually around after six seven o'clock they will start discounting all of the deli foods and all of the bentos and they will usually mark them down to about half price so in a pinch, if you're starving and you really need like a nice balanced meal, I think this is an option that you should keep in mind. Also, whenever you are in a supermarket and you see discounts in the meat section, I recommend snapping those up because meat can always be frozen and used later. It's good to have a good variety of frozen meats because you never know when you're gonna have trouble finding them in the future. And sometimes in a pinch, you're just really, really happy to find like a full frozen chicken breast in the freezer. So we covered meats, next I wanna talk about buying vegetables. When I buy vegetables, I try to buy one of every color, and this is for a few reasons. One, because I've heard that eating a variety of different colors in your vegetables um, helps ensure you're getting a good balance of uh, vitamins and nutrients. I don't know if that's true, but I like to think that it is. Um, but two, also because it makes food more visually appealing. And I think that when you are eating at home, Making foods that are visually appealing, it just makes a huge difference. Having a bunch of different colors on your plate, um, it helps you feel like you're treating yourself and not that you're stuck here eating whatever you have. For example, for color variety, I like to buy what they call karapi man, which is like colored peppers. And uh, these are great. I shop at farmer's markets rather than supermarkets. So you can find lots of really cute things that are seasonally available that are normally not found in big corporate supermarket chains. So I also got rainbow shard, which I'm really excited for, Swiss shard. Uh, all the stems are bright, vibrant colors. And this makes sautés more fun. Like instead of sautéing something that's completely green, you've got little bits of red, yellow, pink, and white in there as well. Now finally, one of the most important things that I want to talk about is mental health. And we are learning more and more about the situation in Japan and the situation in the world day by day and really we can only take it day by day. Um, try not to focus too much on the future and what's going to happen a week from now or two weeks from now or a month from now because nobody knows. Keep in touch with the people around you because even, and I know that there will be people in the comments who will say like, oh I don't have a good relationship with my family or I don't have a lot of friends so nobody would care if I got sick. I promise you, for every single one of you, there is someone who would be devastated if something happened to you. And you probably don't even know they exist or you don't know that they feel the way that they do, but I promise you everybody has somebody who cares about them. And for us and for the people who do care about us, the best we can do is do our best to take care of ourselves. Yeah, if you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling like nobody cares about you, maybe just reach out to the people around you and see how they're feeling because you might be surprised to know that others are feeling the same way. Everybody who watches this video, I, I really want you to be careful. I want you to stay snuggled up at home. I want you to eat good food, be healthy. If you are staying home as much as possible, make sure that you keep your windows open, get a nice airflow going through your apartment so that you are 
constantly breathing fresh air at the moment and this might change over the next couple of days or weeks um it is not illegal to go outside so if you are feeling claustrophobic you can go for a walk around the block you can go to the grocery store to pick up ingredients you can go check out the sakura blooming near your house um the important thing is to keep to yourself keep a distance from other people um don't go to clubs, don't go to izakaya, don't go to nomikai, don't go to hanami, don't gather in big groups, even small groups I would avoid at this point. I'm only talking to one person right now and that person also lives here. I'm shooting this video inside instead of going out, but uh, you see. I'm sitting right in front of the trees, I can hear the wind blowing through the trees, I'm getting the natural sunlight, I'm getting my green. So this is as much outdoor activity as I'm gonna get today. <laughs> anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that these tips have been useful for you. And if you want a list of things that you should be buying, um, I'll make a little grocery list or like flesh out my tips down in the description box. Please leave a message in the comments if you have any other tips to add. And if you are going through a lot of this stuff ahead of us in Japan because we are quite slow and you have additional pieces of advice to give. I think that information is extremely valuable right now, so please leave it in the comment section below. Um, otherwise, I hope that we are all taking good care of ourselves. I hope that we are staying in, we are washing our hands, we are staying healthy, and being super protective of ourselves and our mental health and our physical health. Thank you for listening. Uh, stay safe, and we will talk again soon. Okay. Bye.